Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Nathan Kring, AG4NI, okay? And uh, he has questions about an old video of mine, 163, more on the j pole antenna. And I discuss current and voltage distribution on an antenna and a balanced feed line. Actually, it's a little different from that. I went back and looked. Uh, what I was discussing was a, a stub using a so-called transmission line stub, a quarter wave transmission line stub to feed the J-pole. Here's how a J-pole works. You've got a stub, and then this goes on up from here to here is one half wavelength or about one meter ish okay and this right here is one quarter lambda let's make it a little shorter okay so this would come down here one quarter lambda now this is shorted here so right here it's zero ohms and up here, it's very high ohms. And that's a great impedance to feed a, uh, a line like that, the end fed dipole. Okay. And what we do is we find a spot down here at the bottom that's 50 ohms. And that's where we feed the antenna at those two points. Okay. Now let's show what's going in, inside that quarter stub. First of all, let's take a transmission line, two parallel lines that are one, one lambda, one, one lambda, one wavelength long, and short it at one end. Okay, now let's suppose then that this will resonate at um, some frequency and we know that we're going to do voltage on this scale here in the middle. The voltage will go up. Here's the halfway point. So the voltage starts at zero. It has to start at zero because it's shorted. It will go up to the maximum, come back down to zero, come down here to the minimum, and come back up here to zero. Now, this is shorted, here, shorted. So the current is maximum here. And it, let's see, we want about there. It's going to come down like this. It's maximum here, zero there, minimum here. And it's going to come back up through here and go up to a maximum. So the current and the voltage are 90 degrees out of phase. R. I'll just put R. 90 degrees out of phase. Now, as it turns out, if you were to compute the power in there, you'd have a positive section of power, positive times positive, a negative section of power, positive times negative, positive section of power, a negative times a negative, and a negative section of power, you got a positive times a negative. So we have these areas here where the power is positive, here it's negative, here it's positive, here it's negative. You add it all up and you get zero. Okay. When you have two, two waves that are that much out of phase. Well, let's, okay, that's fine. But what we want to look at is just a quarter wavelength. Okay. So the purple line is the, is, is, is our zero 
for uh, voltage, okay? So we have high current because it's shorted. You get your highest current here. Here you have zero current because it's open. Here you have zero voltage because it's uh, shorted. And up here you have your minimum or your maximum voltage here. So what we've done is a transformation in a quarter stub from, if this is zero, remember uh, the impedance is the voltage over the current. Let me see, E equals I R. Okay, so if we divide this by I and divide that by I, we cancel these I's, E over I, that's not a J, E over I is R. Okay, and in when we're dealing with the phase differences, we use uh, uh, impedance rather than just resistance. Okay, so the impedance here is zero volts. The impedance here is zero. And the impedance here is um, technically infinite, okay? But in actuality, because of everything involved, we'll just call it high, all right? So this is a quarter wave stub, okay? Now, if this is zero resistance and this is a high resistance, let's attach to this a, a half wave dipole. Okay, it's going to have its lowest resistance at the center and its highest at the ends. Well, we got a nice high impedance feed point. Okay, now all we have to do is figure out where we can feed this so that it's 50 ohms. Well, it is right here, but we don't want to feed it there because we want to feed it down here. There is some point in here where this is 50 ohms, okay? And that's where we feed it. It comes out here. It's a transformer. Quarter wave stub is a transformer, an impedance transformer. Picture. Um, now, his question had to do with these things being out of phase with each other. This is a concept that is, re by the way, that's how j pole works. You can also do that at HF. Get a nice single band, uh, very well tuned uh, uh, dipole and fed with the quarter wave stub. And MFJ sells both, I think, 20 and 40 meter um, stub like antennas there. It's very cool what to do. Okay, what we want to talk about. What do we want to talk about here? Oh, I want to talk about this idea. If you're looking at a voltage waveform, notice the voltage waveform is usually the one that is used as a reference. Okay, as a reference, the voltage waveform. Let's make a circuit here. We've got some AC generator to a resistor in series with an inductor up here, okay? Now, we use the voltage made by this voltage thing here uh, as our reference. So we start at a positive going zero crossing, and that's our reference voltage. Now, what's gonna happen in the inductor? As the voltage increases, this thing is going to push back. As the voltage decreases, this thing's going to try and keep the current flowing. Okay, so it's a typical inductor. So if we look at the waveform here, um, it's going to be like this. Okay, now is power consumed? Yes, power is consumed in the resistor. All right, no power is consumed in a capacitor or an inductor. Okay, and you, now this, this blows people's minds. The current and the voltage are different. Because it's an inductive circuit, the voltage is lagging. I'm sorry, voltage is our reference. Current is lagging behind. So there's some positive power. There's a little bit of negative 
but some positive power, okay, so that you get some positive power out of this. Now, if you look at the power, it's the multiplier. You've got to multiply the two curves, right? So let's, if we multiply a positive by a positive, up to here we have positive. Up to here we have positive. From here to here, we've got one negative, one positive. So that's negative power. And so on. We've got another spot over here to get all of that to work correctly. And down over here, this area here, is negative power. So we have parts with negative power and parts with positive power. Okay. Now, if you look at the actual maximum power transfer that goes through here, you get something called volt amps, which is the voltage times the maximum current. Okay, it gives us a scalar. And the problem is that the wires actually have to carry that because what they need to do is charge the inductor and then they need to take the charge back from the inductor back to here, okay? So the power lines have to support this delayed or reactive current. And so the power lines have to be stronger than what you would think they would be just for that uh, resistor right there. This is a very common load, by the way, in motors. And you find motors in everything in your house. You've got your uh, air conditioner, your heater, um, anything that moves air, a fan. Um, your uh, hot tub has got motors in it to push the water around. Uh, there's lots of things that do this, and it is far more common to have an inductive load than a capacitive load. So what the utility will do is add capacitance across the line uh, to kind of move this back so that it's more uh, resonant. Okay, so I think that answers the question that uh, Nathan has. Let's just see here. He says his 14-year-old son is showing interest in getting his technician license. Well, son, do it. Go for it. Okay, and we talk about phase shift and things like that. Okay, now an antenna is a reactive device. And we often see this diagram with high voltage at the ends to, to high voltage at the ends to current max in the middle and down at the ends. Well, this is not strictly true because the impedance at this point is not zero. It's somewhere between 30 and 70 ohms for a dipole. And we just hope that it's 50 ohms. And so we feed it with 50 ohm coax. Okay. Now, the thing is that the antenna is radiating. And as you can see the power equation here, you've got some negative power over here and some positive over here. So I'm here to tell you these curves are the wrong curves for what's actually going on in an antenna. Okay, it is reactive. Um, it is what's called resonant if it's done right. An antenna that's resonant means that here we have a resistance and a phase and the phase equals zero. That is a resonant antenna. If you put power into that at an impedance that matches the impedance right here, all of that power will be either turned to heat in the wire or will be radiated. Okay? You've got two kinds of resistance. You've got your resistance ohmic plus your radiation resistance, okay, in an antenna. Now, no antenna does that. Um, they are um, reactive. So you can model an antenna as a resistor plus a capacitor plus a coil Okay, going to the other lead. Here's your resistance. Remember, there's two kinds of resistance. There's the 
ohmic and the radiation resistance. You have some capacitance and you have some uh, inductance here. Okay, now measured in Henry's. When the at the single frequency at which the capacitive reactance equals the inductive reactance, they cancel each other because they're out of phase. And you see only the resistance. Okay, you change that frequency a little bit and you will see a change. Now, I know this is a little weird, but if here's the frequency of resonance, you're going to have some minimum SWR due to the fact that the feed point impedance is not exactly 50 ohms. If you're really lucky, you can get that, but you go one foot higher or lower than that, your SWR is going to be up, and as you move away from the resonant frequency, no, as you move away from the lowest SWR, it goes up, and you're hoping that in the band you use it, it's less than 2 to 1, and then you've got a nice antenna. Okay, so you'll never get 0, and hopefully you'll be less than 2.1 across the band here. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret. A real antenna, which has resistance, capacitance, and inductance, okay, and you're feeding this with the feed line, all right, it's the, if you look at the ratios of the resistors, just it, let's assume that this thing is balanced. You've got, and, and, and so you're resonant. You're just looking at resistances here. But if this resistance is not equal to 50 ohms, then you're going to have a little bit of an SWR. Now, if you move frequency off from that, what's going to happen to the SWR? Well, this reactance here suddenly doesn't add up to zero anymore. And so it can compensate to some degree for the wrong SWR match there. And you can actually have, here's resonance, the lowest SWR is at the point where everything in here feeds the least power back. Okay, but the frequency of resonance can be slightly different from that. Slightly, slightly different from that. Something to be aware of and just a trick of the, of the way electronics works, okay? Minimum SWR is close to the resonant frequency, but the resonant frequency is where the X component equals zero, which may or may not be the lowest SWR. To treat your radio the nicest, go for the lowest SWR. Okay, so I think we've answered rather thoroughly uh, Nathan's uh, uh, question here. And uh, Nathan, who's AG, AG4NI, good luck with your uh, on-the-air activities. Uh, hope to run into you sometime. And there you have it. So if anyone would like to help support this channel financially, go to dcastler.com slash support. You can go Patreon, you can go PayPal, different ways in there. And if you uh, would like to participate in our monthly giveaway, go to decastler.com slash giveaway and it tells you how. And it's uh, free. All it costs you is a stamp to send me an entry. And I'll draw one of those during the first live stream of the month for the previous month and send out uh, whatever is the particular item for that month. It's all free to you. So if you win, uh, you get um, the item shipped to you for free. Now, um, all other entries to me are uh, shredded, so I don't keep any lists or records or anything like that. Uh, you've got complete privacy. If you don't win, it goes in the shredder. If you do win, I send your entry back to you. 
Don't keep any, any copies of that. Until we next meet, 73.